Hi, I'm Ken Howard, and welcome to the Gay Therapy LA podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk about the role and value of the fuck buddy or friend with benefits for gay men. Uh, recently, some clients in my practice, which you know for over 27 years has focused on the mental health and well-being of adult gay men, have been discussing the role and value of a fuck buddy in their lives. And while all sexual topics, even in our modern age, seem to come fraught with controversy these days, um, the topic of the fuck buddy, which is sometimes but not always used interchangeably with the term friend with benefits, is equally controversial, with one camp saying it's a great idea and others being appalled at the concept, including other gay men. So I always wanted to listen to and and learn from the thoughts and philosophies and feelings of my clients. I heard some interesting things from one particular client recently who gave me permission to share his arguments publicly in either a blog or a podcast, even though I'm changing some details for, you know, always confidentiality reasons. So let's call him Cody. Um, Cody is a southern boy in his early 30s who has been in a relationship for six years and lives in North Carolina. And we work via Skype, and it's really a life coaching relationship since I'm only licensed in California to practice psychotherapy. So when I work with guys on Skype or FaceTime in other states or even in other countries, legally we call it life coaching and I can, you know, explain some differences uh, between therapy and coaching when when we talk. But Cody's partner, Matt, is also in his early 30s and got accepted and now attends a very prestigious law program in a New England state, which was just the chance of a lifetime for Matt. Cody, meanwhile, co-runs a small business which is rapidly growing into a larger one, and moving with Matt to his new city would have been a very difficult proposition. He did not want to leave a very good job, especially not temporarily when Matt could end up in a law firm anywhere in the country, or certainly in, in the state. So Cody and Matt plan to get married immediately after Matt's law school graduation, and they've already planned for much of what they want to do in their wedding, but that's a while off. So Cody can afford to visit Matt at regular intervals throughout the year, and they communicate, you know, even kind of sexy talk or sexting uh, via Skype or via FaceTime almost every night. But their relationship still feels the sting of being a long-distance relationship, leaving both of them frequently horny and lonely. So to solve this, they agreed to have an open relationship, and some of the terms and ground rules of handling Matt were worked out in joint sessions with me on Skype, as I always recommend gay couples do. It's too complex and full of pitfalls to handle approaching opening your relationship without support. I do this with gay male couples a lot, and it tends to work out really well, because when you have that support, you negotiate how you want to gently change your relationship um, if you want it to be more open, but to do it, as I said in a blog article one time, how to have an open relationship without hurt feelings. So I've coached both Matt and Cody separately as well, as each has had a need for support for very specific occupational and personal goals. We did some career coaching for each one, and... um, One of what I call the external resources that this situation needed, as both guys agreed, is that each wanted a fuck buddy who would stand in for their partner at certain times, mostly sexual, but for some social companionship locally, too. Matt is still looking for his uh, at this time, but he's meeting new guys at school and in his college city, especially via Grindr and Scruff and Meetup.com groups. The first guy he met didn't work out that well for Cody, but he found a second one that he likes. Um, Cody is a smart guy and and spoke really clearly about his fuck buddy, Chris. And he said it's been ideal. They get along and have fun, including sex, but Chris has recently gotten out of a three-year relationship and is not looking for anything serious. So he is the perfect candidate for Cody. What Cody related about Chris includes... uh, some in the following list and others I've added based on other conversations with clients and and even with personal friends. But here are some of the special advantages about the role 
and the value of the fuck buddy. So number one. Number one, it is not an avoidance of relationships. You know, contrary to some critics, having a fuck buddy is not the indulgence of some, you know, intimacy avoidant, emotionally stunted, horn dog selfish clod. It is a different type of sexual and emotional relationship, perhaps based more on fondness or, or a fraternal feeling, yo, my bro, um, than on love, or, or perhaps a love that's you know, fraternal and not more domestic, let's say. So number two in the value of a, a fuck buddy, it can be the combination of sexuality and camaraderie without the components of long-term romance and domesticity. So for some people, such as those with long-distance partners, having a local fuck buddy means having someone in person for companionship for local outings and, and just recreation around town and even sexual expression but without the commitment and domestic component of a partner or spouse relationship I call it its relationship light <laughs> number three it can be a coping strategy for having long-distance relationships long-distance relationships can be a, a result of work projects you know even overseas which I see in my practice in Los Angeles for people away on TV or film set locations or it can be the result of school and training programs healthcare treatment caring for a distant relatives health or or settling their estate after someone's passed away or even a military deployment so open negotiation of the ground rules during the absence is better than unilaterally violating a monogamy agreement aka cheating without discussion or abstaining and resenting the physical and emotional harm that can come with that deprivation. Young guys with strong libidos who don't have the opportunity to have sex, you know, they kind of get a little crazy because, as we all know, you know, masturbation is great, but it doesn't quite cut it the same way that sex with a partner can be, even an anonymous partner. So number four, having a fuck buddy can be a bridge between class or cultural issues that really might get in the way of a primary relationship. For some fuck buddies, there can be issues of class or culture that make having a long-term relationship un either untenable or very difficult. You know, if you think of Downton Abbey and the relationship between Sybil and Tom, you know, Sybil was the lady in the house and Tom was the chauffeur, you know, they had a class difference. So it's not ideal, but you know, sometimes your fuck buddy can be from a different culture or a different class from you and yet you want to have a good time with them even though a long-term relationship might not be practical for some family or cultural or class reason it really shouldn't work that way but you know we kind of know that it does number five is having a fuck buddy can be a collaborative way to get needs met that have in inherent limitations it, it's an exchange of favors so many human interactions involve a negotiated exchange of favors based on mutual needs. And each fuck buddy relationship has unique parameters that make it work. It's what are these two people creating that they want it to exist as their fuck buddy relationship. So number six, the fuck buddy relationship is not for everyone, but it can be for some people. And it's okay to embrace it as much as it is to reject it soundly. Sexual self-empowerment means saying yes when you want to say yes and saying no when you want to say no. If you want to say yes to a fuck buddy relationship with another consenting adult as an autonomous adult with control and dominion over your own body, you get to make that choice. Although if you have a primary partner, this must be a very frank discussion in order to avoid a ton of hurt and resentment and misunderstanding and abandonment and even rage. So, you know, if you have a fuck buddy in addition to a primary partner, that has to be discussed and negotiated, and you have to talk about the reasons why that fuck buddy is a resource for one or the other or both of you. Number seven, having a fuck buddy supports a global benevolent idea of brotherhood. You know, as a child of the 60s, I grew up with, you know, make love, not war. And uh, the Dalai Lama recently said, Something about if every child grew up meditating for 20 minutes a day, war could be eliminated in a generation. So with so many countless examples of 
how men kill each other in gang violence, war, violent crime, and so on in such adversarial relationships, having a fuck buddy can be an example of benevolence, nonviolence, and camaraderie in the brotherhood of man. This is all part of the solution, not the problem. Number eight, it's a practice for a real commitment in incremental gain or baby steps along the way. I still maintain that I prepared for my long-term relationship with my husband, who is wonderful, by the way. I never miss a chance to say that, you know, after 17 years. But, you know, I was previously living alone with my cat for a number of years after college first. And after years of living with roommates or alone, having a pet really was a dress rehearsal for attending to and caring for and sharing with a human adult partner, now spouse, in a domestic setting. Having a fuck buddy might not be a deep commitment in romance and domesticity and finances and things like that, but it can be a way of exploring relating to another person that is somewhere in between being single and being partnered. For some people, these incremental steps build their confidence to tolerate a commitment and equip them for a long-term relationship with mutual responsibility later on. Number nine, having a fuck buddy relationship can be self-empowering sexually, trying different things without feeling embarrassed with a partner, exploring one's own body, and the likes and dislikes of sensations. While communicating with a primary partner is essential to a good sex life, having a fuck buddy can be an opportunity to explore your sexual interests and fantasies in a lower stakes situation. Some people who are shy about telling their partner their sexual fantasies, especially the kinkier ones, might be more uninhibited with a lower stakes fuck buddy. It really shouldn't work that way, but we all know it does, and we have to deal with that in reality. Even though research has shown that partners who share their sexual fantasies report more satisfaction in their relationship. That was a factoid that was found by the research of uh, Dr. Justin Laymiller. L-E-H-M-I-L-L-E-R. And Justin Laymiller has, uh, has a great book called Tell Me What You Want. And it, it's about a big study of adult sexual fantasies. And there's a lot we can learn from that. Because um, before he wrote that book, there wasn't a lot of research on sexual fantasies. And yet we need that because it helps couples to communicate and grow and really explore their sex lives, which can improve their sex life. And by way of that, it improves their relationship. So check out that book if you have a chance. Justin Lay Miller, Tell Me What You Want. And so by being free to explore in certain kind of sexual laboratory situations, you can identify your likes and dislikes sexually and not have to switch to domestic responsibility. Okay, who's cooking dinner? You don't have to switch to that mode right after. With a fuck buddy you can just keep it in this experimental mode. So number 10, a fuck buddy can be uh, bridge differences in sexual orientation. You know, while I really don't respect closeted men as much as those brave gay men who have the courage to come out regardless of the circumstances, like living in the Bible Belt, having a fuck buddy can be a way for a man who is straight publicly or bisexual to get the other half of his sexual or, or even social needs met. Now, this is particularly controversial, but all gay men have some idea about this. Many men can be ambivalent or conflicted about how they identify sexually. They can be fluid. Some might feel a pressure to conform to heterosexual norms. Others might quite selfishly want to ride the coattails of heterosexual privilege and kind of have their uh, cake and eat it too. You know, albeit at the risk of exploiting or using the gay buddy, but this is better if it's an honest discussion of what the deal is. The fuck buddy relationship can also help a conflicted guy move closer down the spectrum to living as an out gay man, but in a gentle and gradual process that feels right for him. So it's not right for everybody, but you know, sometimes the fuck buddy role is about evolving the sexual identity that you come to realize is right for you. Number 11 is a fuck buddy can help other specific situations. You know, the fuck buddy relationship can be a resource for a gay man in early recovery from crystal meth, who's, you know, very used to the party and play or the chemsex scene. 
to practice having sober sex with a no judgment, experimental, low stakes, fail safe, fuck buddy atmosphere. I've worked with many guys in my practice who need this kind of opportunity because learning to have sober sex again is really a skill in recovery that you usually can't get in a CMA meeting, you know, Crystal Meth Anonymous, unless you're hooking up with the other guys there, which is kind of frowned upon sometimes. The fuck buddy relationship can also help someone with a disability or an injury to be sexual again in their own way, even if they don't have a primary relationship yet. You know, this can be a certain kind of rehabilitation that, you know, something like a licensed physical therapist certainly can't provide. This can be for guys who've been injured in a vehicle or sports or industrial accident or maybe as a combat veteran who uses prosthetics, like a prosthetic leg. And that can also be the role for an escort boy or a sex worker. And I have other material on that on my website on gaytherapyla.com uh, about uh, seeing sex workers, the risks, or escort boys, the risks and benefits. So you can look on the website for that if you're interested in that. But... Um, you know, the fuck buddy relationship can also be for these rehabilitational situations like learning how to have sober sex or learning how to have sex again after an injury or an illness or an accident. So number 12, um, the fuck buddy relationship can allow for specific sexual interests like BDSM or fetishes to be fulfilled. There are times when everything else in a relationship is great, the emotional, the sexual, the domestic, the financial, the familial, but certain sexual interests go unfulfilled because your partner's not into it. So having a fuck buddy who can provide a certain outsourced activity like BDSM or kink play if your partner or spouse is very vanilla, that can be a way for that partner to be fulfilled without burdening his partner to do something he really doesn't like. I've seen this in my practice. This this was based on a couple of real life couples where one partner wanted to have some kinky playtime and the other one was real vanilla and so they kind of outsourced it with lots of discussion and lots of negotiation and, and they kind of outsourced it to a fuck buddy. And it can really be a win win solution to the dilemma. Everybody's happy. You know, in real life practice I've seen that work. That's not just theoretical, but a couple can really negotiate that and and there's a certain feeling that um, the person with the kinks is no longer frustrated and the person who's more vanilla uh, feels relieved that he doesn't have to do what he doesn't want to do and then they're left to have you know a different kind of sex together but um, maybe something else outside with fuck buddies or an or an open relationship Number 13, a fuck buddy can be a way to manage sexual incompatibilities, like we just said. The fuck buddy relationship can outsource situations where the couple gets along in most ways, but you know, perhaps a strict top is partnered to a versatile bottom. For the versatile bottom to be able to top once in a while might require a fuck buddy who's very happy to oblige. This can be the case when a partner is fulfilled in every way in the relationship except you wanting to fulfill you know his size queen interest outsourcing this to a well endowed fuck buddy occasionally can fulfill the desire and then he can get back to regular domestic and sexual life this prevents frustrations from building and can resolve tension or even unspoken resentments in a relationship Number 12, last, um, Cody says that having experiences with outside buddies, rather than undermining his relationship with Matt, actually strengthens it. Because he said he sees what's out there and learns to appreciate the relief when he's finally back to see Matt. Because, as he says, everyone else is just not Matt. When they're together again after an absence, it's all the sweeter to revisit the familiarity and intimacy that they have built for years now in the relationship and they never take each other for granted. So that's the list of advantages. There are disadvantages too of cavorting with fuck buddies, you know, which have been discussed everywhere. Um, sexual conservatives, which can include, include plenty of therapists, even gay ones, would deplore the very concept of the fuck buddy as deviating too far from socially expected relationship norms, particularly heterocentric ones. But like most controversial topics, listening to both sides of a debate can entice you to clarify your feelings on the subject. 
You have a right to your own feelings, even if they differ from your peers. Only you have dominion over your own body and what is and is not done to it. I work a lot with sexual abuse and uh, even male rape survivors. And this is important, to remember that you have dominion over your own body and what is and is not done to it. Sexual self-empowerment means taking all these questions about sex and relationships and deciding what works and doesn't work specifically for you based on your values and your rather hardwired preferences and proclivities. So, you know, if you're having some difficulty figuring out sexual or relationship dynamics by yourself, if it feels overwhelming or confusing, or your communication with your partner feels unproductive, then consider therapy or coaching with me. I'm happy to um, help you out with these things. Every relationship is different. Every relationship needs a different kind of troubleshooting or support, but... Um, you know, to toot my own horn here for a second, you know, when you've been working with gay male couples and with individuals as long as I have, you know, over 27 years, you see a lot of the same problems in gay relationships over and over again. And I always joke, the older I get, the stronger my opinions get. One of my strong opinions is that gay male couples need to have support and they need to have discussion for what's going on. And sometimes having... Uh, a couple's therapist or a couple's relationship coach can help you stay out of the bloodbath, you know, bad arguments and get down to real productive communication that helps you to solve the problem. You know, a lot of creative problem solving about what works. Even if none of the options is ideal, um, you still can come up with a feasible solution based on working together about how to get each of your needs met. So, um, lots more blog articles on GayTherapyLA.com, and I hope you found this helpful. Your comments and your suggestions uh, are always welcome. Visit GayTherapyLA.com, and uh, thanks, and uh, see you on the next episode. Bye.